Hi guys, Gilliam Elliott here. Today I'm gonna cover key factors you need to know if you wanna start a career helping people access affordable dentistry abroad. Being a dental tourism coordinator can be very lucrative if done correctly, but first let's go over what dental tourism is. Dental tourism is the practice of traveling to another country for dental treatment. Many people from countries such as the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and others choose to travel abroad for dental care, and they're usually motivated by the amount of money they can save. Also, if you find this subject interesting, please take a second to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. But let's go deeper into the topic. Accessing basic dental care is becoming increasingly difficult in many nations, specifically developed nations. In the United States, there's a remarkable portion of the citizens who have no dental insurance, and those that do, they often find themselves underinsured, facing challenges to afford even basic dental procedures. Now, let's take a moment to talk about popular dental tourism destinations. There are many well-known tourism destinations throughout the world. For example, Mexico, Thailand, Hungary, Turkey, Costa Rica, Colombia, which is where I recently got dental work done, and many more. And most people who travel overseas for dentistry also take the opportunity to explore the culture and the landmarks in the country that they're traveling to. Okay, so next I want to discuss the widely held belief that dental tourism is low risk. Many patients choose dental treatment abroad because they consider it low risk and they feel they won't be in grave danger if complications arise, unlike with a major surgical operation. Plus, most dental procedures have virtually no recovery time, so patients can get a dental procedure and continue with their tourist activity almost immediately. Okay, so I wanna take a few minutes in the video right now to share with you guys a conversation I had with an Uber driver, and it ties into the last subject uh, that we just discussed about how people perceive dental tourism as low risk. So recently I was taking an Uber in the US and the Uber driver asked me what I did for a living. So I told her about our company, medical tourism business, and how we assist the facilitators, clinics, and other participants in the health tourism sector grow their organizations. And after I explained to her how the process worked, she began to express her frustration with the high cost of healthcare in the US and her desire to access more affordable healthcare. And although she said that she would be open to traveling abroad for a procedure, she also mentioned that she worried about the quality of care in other countries. At this point in the conversation, I started telling her about medical tourism facilitators, and how they coordinate the trip for their clients, and how they vet the overseas healthcare providers to ensure that they provide high quality treatment, and she immediately got excited and saw the value in hiring a facilitator. I mean, I could visibly see the excitement in her face when she realized she could have someone guide her through this whole trip and this whole experience. But as my Uber ride was coming to an end and our conversation was concluding, she did express to me how glad she was to learn about dental tourism and medical tourism and expressed to me that after doing some research, she's more than likely gonna get a dental procedure done abroad. But she told me she was gonna hold off on getting medical procedures done abroad because it seemed riskier to her to get a medical procedure done in a different country. And this is a comment that I've heard several times over the years from people interested in getting treatment abroad, they feel like getting dentistry done abroad is low risk. Likewise, I've spoken to many medical tourism facilitators who share this belief and who say they solely want to facilitate trips for patients who want dentistry abroad because it seems less risky to them as business owners. So as you can see, this seems to be a general belief on both sides, but what do you think? Do you feel like dental treatment abroad is less risky than other forms of treatment abroad? Let me know in the comment section. Okay, so lastly, I'm going to cover safety and quality assurance. If you're considering a career as a dental tourism facilitator, it's important to work with clinics who have earned an accreditation and who uphold international standards. This will ensure your client's safety and guarantee they receive the highest quality of care. And you as a dental tourism facilitator should also be certified to show prospective clients that you hold yourself to the highest industry standards. If you're ready to take the next step and start a career in the dental tourism industry, the first step is accreditation. I'm going to leave some links below to our certification program as well as my contact information. But thank you guys for watching this video and I look forward to speaking to you soon.